right, so let's talk about kits. Uh, so Paul, lead us off and tell us what you got. Okay, well, thanks to the work of the designer, Daniel Marks, we have this newly developed version of the RF Bitbanger. This, you'll notice there's lots of surface mount components on it. Uh, those are pre-installed by the factory, which is astoundingly cheap, including providing the parts. Um, and this is the first one I built up. Um, built up so we'll build up several more and have hopefully working demos at at DEFCON. Um, this where is it? <laughs> this box contains all the parts, or almost all the parts, or a hundred of them. Uh, for example, this bag contains one hundred little tiny bags each of which contains 14 toroid cores, <laughs> which is what it takes to build up a full set of Vampest filters for the, for the RF Bitbanger. I also have obtained some several dummy loads that I can hook up to the RF port so we can operate them legally and without interfering with anybody. My testing has only just begun on, on this board, so hopefully no major problems surface in the next week or so uh, so that we can have it working we'll not be able to sell kits because not all the parts have arrived yet um, some of them are coming on the slow boat from china because it's very much cheaper to buy parts over there um, even with the shipping and the waiting like a factor of 10 cheaper for a lot of these low cost parts quite amazing um, I'm not sure what else is, there is to say, except that we're going to try to get these into people's hands and get more people experimenting with them. And uh, yeah, I think that's a, a great summary. We'll have several. We'll have at least two posters from from Dr. Marks at DefCon in the poster session. A poster session is uh, just a a way to display visual information about a project in the format of a poster instead of a talk or a paper um you put it into a, a, a poster um so this is a, a tradition in, in academia and we're we're going to do it for the second year at at defcon this this made a lot of sense last year we were able to get a lot of traction and communicate uh multiple complex things uh, for for folks uh, through the poster session. So we're going to do it again. And the RF Bitbanger, this is a, a high frequency board that does a new digital protocol called SCAMP. And all of that will be communicated in a, a compact, hopefully easy to understand way. Uh, we'll have QR codes so people can walk away with the PDF of the poster. And when we say we're not going to sell kits that means that we're not going to kit up and have, be able to hand over the entire board to people at defcon that would have been great um it's an awful lot of work to schlep product and and sell it at the event um we have a limited license with rf village and it this was a lot of work to achieve so we're we're able to sell two different products at uh, RF Village, rather than be told to go to the vendor area where all the commercial sellers are, which is what they strongly prefer. So we argued that because we're a nonprofit and we're offering these for donations and we don't have the staff or the product lineup or store or anything like that, we just want people to know that we have a kit and if they want to donate money to ORI, they can get the kit. So what we're hoping to do is to show the demo working there on the table in RF Village. And if you want to get one, then donate some money to us and we'll send you a kit soon. Like in the immediate future, like you, you don't have to, you're not going to walk away with it. But if you purchase it at, uh, you know, give us, give us a donation, uh, we'll, we'll send you a kit. And so that's kind of our idea here um, with this particular project. And so far, so good. I think there were some concerns about it being microphonic, and we'll we're we're nailing that down. That was something that I'm not sure we saw in the through hole version of the of the board. Um, but the 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 uh, research and the testing continues, and it's an active project, and and it's got some some 
some interesting stuff going on with it. So so if you're interested in it, it's RF Bitbanger, and we'll be at RF Village and DEF CON uh, coming up here in a week or so. This is ah. one, this is one of the boards that I have not done any assembly work on. This is how it comes from the factory. So you can see uh, that chip there is basically an Arduino at Mega 328P. And uh, the second biggest thing is a voltage regulator. Um, the power amplifiers are not on here yet because they're through hole devices. Yeah, thank you. That's a good view. So yeah, lots more of that at at our village. Um, all right. Any anything else about RF Bitbanger that you know about? No, I think that's the current state of affairs. Okay. Yeah. No, we should should have a a decent demo. We have some posters for this. Uh, the opportunity to get a kit. So that'll be what you'll get with this particular kit. Uh, and you can get this almost all through hull too. That's the, the earlier version that we've shown before. So the RF Bitbanger is available as a as a full through hull uh, design uh, to fully explore every last bit and to get your hands on, on every last component. Uh, you can do it that way. And you'll see it on the screen here now. That's what it looks like. So same design as a through hole kit this was designed to be something that you could build out of your junk box so the parts the bill of materials is selected from things that are commonly available so it, at every point it's like would somebody honestly have this in their junk box then okay we'll we'll put it into this design i think it increases the parts count a little bit but it's a it's a very interesting take on a hf uh, radio design and and that's it. it this is is here in front of you and works so there's at least there's these two variants the through hole version and also the kit version that okay we're going to go ahead and put um as much as we can put uh surface mount and you'll get that pre-installed the the stuff that has to be installed through hole or that makes more sense to be installed through hole you get to install that that's the kit part um so that sort of hybrid kit approach is what we're going to bring to DEF CON this year. Yeah, this through hole version is slightly different and it has two circuit boards. The display and, and user controls are on the, the smaller board and the radio is on the larger board. Um, that option is, has been designed out for the SMT version in order to save costs and make it more compact. Uh, but this two board uh, design would make it more suitable for putting into a convenient chassis uh, trade-offs. All right, so that's one of the things that we'll bring to DEF CON. Um, and so now I'll, I'll turn the floor over to, to James. Um, so so tell us uh, what's going on and anything that you, any questions or uh, things that you're interested in doing at uh, DEF CON? Uh, uh, nothing too major to report, no major questions. We're just uh, excited and getting for and looking forward to uh, upcoming DEF CON. And we're also, you know, getting ready and ramped up for the IEEE conference later uh, this year as well. That'll be happening here. Mostly just getting ready for the various conferences. No, any particular questions, but we're excited to see you all there. Yeah, it'll be good. This is a, a excellent opportunity to all get together in person, which which really helps. Um, so yeah, now is, there's a at least, uh, or we're we're based at RF Village or Radio Frequency Village. So so anybody listening. Um, that's where we'll be. That's in the Flamingo Hotel. Um, so drop by and we'll have a nice, uh, comfortable space. When you enter the room, we'll be to the left along the wall. That's, that's where we anticipate being. Uh, and, you know, when you enter the room, you'll see lots and lots of round tables uh, for competition in the main uh, Wi-Fi CTF. That's one of the major events at DEF CON. And then at the front of the room is uh, the RF Village staff with all of their support and, and lots of other exhibits and 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 things to learn about rf uh, frequency operation radios and and open source work so everyone's welcome there's also a speaking track that'll be when you enter the room you can see it, you look over to your right and there will be a podium and uh, instead of round tables there will be uh, theater seating and that that will be the speaking track running the whole whole weekend uh, so all the, the when the village is open and and one of our uh, colleagues uh, Kent Britton who 
is the other product. So we're hoping to uh, to present to you the RF Bitbanger uh, HF kit for sale, uh, but we'll also be selling PCB antennas from Kent Britton. Uh, so you should be familiar with his his work. He sells uh, PCB antennas for, for microwave bands. He's also giving a talk. Uh, don't want to miss it. So so check the schedule uh, at DEF CON RF Village in the Flamingo. So that's where we'll, that's where we'll be. Um, and the and James already brought up the conference in September in Little Rock, Arkansas for for iWork. That's the IEEE uh, conference that that uh, to to sort of stimulate and and to highlight R and D uh, investment and development through the Chips Act in in places like Arkansas. So we're we're all in on that and and looking forward to that. Yeah, thank thank you, James. Uh, also, um, it's it's probably important to add that there's not there's a whole bunch more villages, not just RF Village, but uh, uh, Biohacking Village is is one that we're very interested in supporting because we are interested in in biomedical open source research and development as well, and our, our particular interest is bacteriophage R and D, and so we plan on visiting Biohacking Village as well at DEF CON and to talk about this. Another village is the policy village uh, because we do regulatory work. And so we'll touch base with folks there. Uh, last year, we had a, a really good session about the White House uh, cybersecurity uh, policy, uh, you know, uh, their, their, essentially their position paper, their, their policy documents that were, that were being worked on uh, last year that have since come out. And there's also been a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, regulatory work that's been done, uh, dynamic spectrum allocation work that's been done, and the Policy Village handles all of this. This is stuff that we work on, and it's uh, excellent experience to kind of touch base and catch up with folks doing work. The opportunity to, to kind of speak with people of the same mind. They're working on this. is it can't be missed. Another village that we try to attend is the Aerospace Village. In the past, they've had excellent presentations on cybersecurity and information security for satellites. And this is something that we've addressed uh, with our uh, authentication authorization uh, sort of work for the for our uplink protocol for Opulent Voice. Uh, so I'll put that into the notes for today's meeting. That, so links that you can find to our work there. So. There's plenty that will be happening next week uh, on touching many areas of, of what we we do. Um, and so if you're listening to this, James is a, a kind of a leader in terms of a biohacking and and biomedical uh, stuff. So if you're you're interested in hearing this and want to get in touch and and do more in that area, then um, we have folks that can that can help you. We should probably talk about FPGA work. Uh, thank you, Ken, for, for being here. He's the newest addition to the FPGA team. So our our field programmable gate array work with analog devices, 9000 series radio chips has been progressing. We've had a remarkable set of experiences over the past couple of months trying to get things to work as are advertised. Um, and any time that you're dealing with a single company's product, it can be challenging. You have to read data sheets and application notes and go to their forums and their wikis and sort of Google up how people have navigated complex systems. That's with one company. So when you're when you're now dealing with uh, three, which is which is sort of what we're doing for our main transponder work, uh, we have a radio chip from analog devices. We have a field programmable gate array chip from Xilinx, and we are using the framework from uh, MathWorks or MATLAB Simulink in order to do the uh, simulation and the the, the design, uh, and then use that design. And we're going to use, um, or we would like to use MathWorks and Simulink HDL coder, uh, so hardware definition language encoding to take those math statements, those mathematical statements from 
math land and convert it to HDL, the actual programming language that goes into the chips. And this is an industry standard way to do it. This is, it gives just huge advantages. All of this working kind of depends on all three companies' products working well together. And we have found out that they do not. So I'm, I'm not going to enumerate all of the things that have happened, uh, but I'm just going to let you know that we now know what the problem is, uh, and it's not us. So, <laughs> so uh, that'll be summarized for our our list. Uh, I'm gonna it got it got it written down in a notebook, and and we're starting to get the attention of the companies by repeatedly, politely, firmly raising the issues. Um, there's a lot of things that that are really honestly the result of one part of the company not talking to the other. And the goal here is to simply use the hardware and the software that we've purchased, we've paid for, as advertised, and just repeatedly insisting that, yes, we should be able to use it as you advertise it. So this is sort of a multi-front battle to... Uh, get our software-defined radio setups working so that volunteers do not waste their time. The feedback that we've gotten that's probably the most important to report here in this forum is that um, we're at the vanguard. It's not incompetence or a misunderstanding on our part. Um, we're, we're simply trying to use it at a very high level. And uh, as somebody on Mastodon told me, uh, this is this is like trying to configure something that's that's sitting on quicksand. So things will change out from underneath you, and there's there's lots of um, uh, conflicting uh, frameworks, uh, incompatibilities, and and products that don't work with companies from or don't work with products from other companies. So we're we're doing a fantastic job here. We've we've managed to get further in um, I'd say four or five months than than some commercial companies will get in a year. So good for us, uh, but we still don't have the ability to uh, put our waveforms over the air. And to me, that's that's the success criteria. So my stress level will remain high and uh, the various teams like Neptune and Hyferia will be unhappy until we get to this state. I was hoping that we would get there by DEF CON so that we could show off like here we are over the air with our with our fancy uh, test stations. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and say we're not gonna achieve that in the next week, um, but it's it's much, much closer than it was and we make steady progress um, every every week. Uh, it's been hard fought. And at the end of the day, I think we'll be, we'll be very far ahead of, of a lot of other people and we'll be able to produce some reference designs that will be of huge value to uh, the commercial sector. So that's my report for, for what we've been up to over the past month or so. I'll be working with, with Ken and Paul, uh, with Manuel, and uh, hopefully Suato. He has a, uh, there's a, there's a bug in the um, DVB S2 encoder uh, when it switches between uh, two different modulations. So there's a, there's an interesting bug there. So if you're listening to this and want to help, if you could, could help us nail that down. Lots and lots of work on the middle sector where the quality of service and, and multiplexing happen. Uh, Paul's been a real hero on the uplink uh, opulent voice protocol. So stuff's coming together. I don't think we'll have this, have the demo over the air, like end to end demo that I, that I wanted at DEF CON, but I think it's going to happen uh, pretty soon. So we'll just keep working. You want to say something about the work on the COPS decoder? Oh, yes, please go ahead. Oh, well, this is work you've been, been spearheading, but some some months ago, I forget exactly how many, we implemented a, a COPS decoder in VHDL. And it's been in the repo, but in a very obscure location. Uh, Michelle's been working to bring that out to its own repo and, and make it more accessible to people who are interested in such things as a little chunk of VHDL code that they can bring into their project and, and get COBS for free. Yeah, you want to talk about uh, what COBS is briefly? and uh... Okay. Uh, COBS stands for Consistent Overhead Byte Stuffing. And it's uh, 
a substitute for a, a more commonly known procedure, which is used in, in SLIP serial line interface protocol, or maybe it's internet protocol, um, and several other things, including uh, KISS TNCs, as a way of uh, delineating the boundaries of packets in a serial, asynchronous serial byte stream, um, which may contain arbitrary binary data. Uh, so you can't just use a carriage return at the end of the line or something like that to delineate your packet, which is what's usually done for text modes. So if you're doing binary data, then you need some way to say, okay, here's the beginning of packet, here's the end of the packet, but anything that happens in between is valid, any any byte value. So uh, the standard way to do that is to identify a, a couple of special bytes. And whenever those appear in the byte stream, you just uh, stuff in an extra flag. And uh, then the, on the other side, there's a procedure for decoding that. And that works fine, but it has a worst case performance of 100% uh, overhead, <laughs> which, which is kind of brutal. And yet means you have to uh, specify your buffer size and so forth to be twice as big as it really needs to be. And COBS is a procedure that's a little more complicated, not very much more complicated, uh, that has a maximum overhead of a couple of percent and typical overhead even lower than that. Uh, by being a little bit clever. And it's designed to be super easy to implement in software. And it really is. It's just a few lines of code in software. It's totally trivial. Uh, if you have a buffer full of data all at once and uh, arbitrary look ahead or you know, a few hundred bytes of look ahead, uh, if you try to implement it in hardware, in a VHDL module, then it, has to be handled as a, a through flow. Uh, and you, I guess you could accept the extra latency of having a big buffer, but that was too painful. So we came up with the necessary logic to make this happen on a byte by byte basis with very little delay. And that turns out to be more complicated than we expected. And uh, we built a test framework for it that generates random test cases uh, like by the thousands and, and hundreds of thousands and millions of, of test cases uh, and then compares them against the correct result. So we've done considerable testing uh, well, against this module and found some corner cases and fixed them and uh, are reasonably confident that, that all the logic is probably correct or correct enough for, uh, for routine use anyway. Uh, and this is, uh, so we had the, the VHDL code for it, the test bench that tests it in the VHDL tools and the Xilinx, uh, and some Python scripts that generate the you know, proper stimulus to, to run these tests. And this is all uh, being moved out of its obscure locations in our uh, development repos and into a, uh, a single repo that, with a little bit of explanation. Yeah, thank you. That's an excellent summary. The The only other step that we haven't taken with this particular body of work is to do a formal uh, verification and validation. Um, and that might this might be a good candidate for for learning how to do that and showing how it's done because there's there's not a whole lot of smaller yet significant examples out there for, for formal uh, formal validation and verification. So that's not something that, that's gonna happen before DEF CON or anything like that, but, but this may be an additional um, bit of value that we can add to this particular repo to, to kind of make it more useful for, for both uh, functional and also educational purposes. Uh, so the, the test frameworks and the, the um, the scripts that produce the stimulus files that go into simulation, that's going to, if it hasn't already been added, it will be added very soon. And the um, the write-up, uh, thank you thank you very much, Paul, for the design write-up. It, it, it has a, a really very high quality and, and lots of, of great visualizations in it. The, the diagrams uh, are, are, are solid. So it's a well-documented bit of code. So we hope it's of use to the community and, and will help people 
uh, learn, uh, you know, here's how you can do a, a sort of a, a smaller yet significant uh, VHDL design, um, something you can incorporate in your code. Uh, and it's also licensed under CERN Open Hardware License Version 2. So that's uh, that's something that we're we're trying to get out the door, and it's uh, coming along. So thank you very much for all the work that you've done. Thank you for your help. Um, anybody who wants to do a little more contributing without taking on a giant project, uh, once we get the Cobb's decoder repo complete, it should be today, maybe tomorrow, the next day, something like that, um, would be invited to try to download it and run the test bench and see if we actually included all the things that are necessary to make it useful code and let us know what we could make better. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for adding that. The raw VHDL and the test bench and the, and the stimulus files are there. And then I'm going to, um, run the script that creates the Vivado project. Now this assumes that you have Vivado and that's what you use, uh, but that'll be available as well. So hopefully this will, we'll get some feedback on, on how we're presenting the, uh, the work. Uh, Cause all of this will be what we will use to, to publish the, um, like the polyphase filter bank stuff for the transponder, um, any additional, uh, FPGA IP. So this is this is how we're going to do it. So if it's useful or not useful, then then we need to know earlier the better. Yeah, this is not going to be a beginner tutorial where everything laid out step by step because that would include explaining everything about all these tools, um, <laughs> and even right. the manufacturers can't manage that. So some level of competence with the Xilinx tools will be assumed. Yeah, that's actually it's actually in a decent state right now. The Vivado falls short in in a lot of ways, just like any large complicated tool does. But the one one of the things that it gets right is the tackle script that will remake the project. And and that has a lot of compatibility with with repos. So that's what we're gonna use and I'll explain it as if I had to do it which means that it will be explained in a very basic way. So, <laughs> so that's the goal. Uh, that's what we're going to try to add. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. All right. Any other, any other things you can think of that we should talk about on the FPGA side? Can we get a little blurb on how DEF CON is going? Any you mean interesting at, tidbits like, like, a, like a daily digest or, you know, just a little two or three sentence. This is what happened. Oh, you mean like at the event? Yeah, once you're there. Yeah, we can do that. Um, what we try to do is post to at least like some some photographs and some paragraphs, uh, brief updates on social media. We've we've tried very hard to to kind of like make make it to where people can see what we're doing and what the booth looks like and what the people look like and and what the room looks like for our village and and other places that we go. So so yeah, I think that this year. Since James will be there, Keith will be there, and we have Lab Tech uh, one and Lab Tech three, uh, and James is Lab Tech too. So we'll have all of our Lab Techs and and a lot of the principals there that will be able to to do some write ups and some some publishing about how it's going. Um, what I'd really like is to have all of the posters also available. Um, you know, during the week, like easily available, like just click here. We, and we can, we can set up a, a maybe a web page on the, our, our website that, that hosts all of this and, and maybe a central place. Um, so yeah, the answer is yes. I think that we'll do, we'll be able to do a pretty good job of, of updating folks, um, you know, about how it's going and, and the sorts of feedback we're getting um, throughout the, throughout the event. And I think, Ken, you also had a, a comment or a question about the structure of the documents repo on our GitHub, and then it might need some some work in order to be more uh, accessible and user friendly. Um, so if if you wanted to talk a little bit about that, that'd be wonderful. Oh, 
not much just uh, noted that it seems like there was uh, a hierarchy that kind of assumed that it was like a single project for the, the group. Maybe we could, if you go down through engineering and then to documents and stuff, it, it'll have like an architecture page, but it doesn't say for what project. Gotcha. I mean, the, the document, the actual document, I think, has a, a description of what project it's associated with, but just maybe grouping it by project or something. Yeah, I think that's a hallmark of us changing the name of the repository from um, Phase 4 Ground to to Open Research Institute. And and that now we need to do a, a, a renovation of the repository to, to kind of organize it per project to identify which documents belong to which project. So that's, that's a feedback that's well taken. And I, I think that we can, I think we can do a, a lot to improve the sort of the, the GitHub uh, situation and, and the structure. So the, the form needs to follow the function now since the, the function has shifted. So that's a, I agree and, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, that repo has the same problem as most open projects have that <clears throat> the pro the, the sort of the, the prejudice is to leave everything available and publish documents and leave them on the web forever. And this is a good thing. That's very important that we do that. But the result is there's stuff that's old, stuff that's obsolete, mixed together with stuff that's new and current. And it's very hard to keep up and keep a, a scorecard of which things are really the best place to go for different pieces of information. Um, and to some extent, reshuffling the, the website uh, in order to make it make sense today is contrary to the, the goal of having the old stuff still remain accessible. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it or that it's going to be impossible. I'm just saying that it's maybe harder than it looks at first glance. Can you use like a symbolic link or something to have the old one? Like I saw some directories say if this is moved, this file's moved over here or something like that. But... You can. Uh, of course, it's more work and the uh, at some point it becomes a maze of twisty passages all alike and you can't tell where you're going anymore. Okay, well, uh, defer to what whatever however you guys I understand the problem you're describing and this noting coming in it, it's trying to get oriented is very yeah. valid yeah yeah the criticism is well taken it needs needs some work um well I didn't mean it to be a critique but anyway no it's, just, <laughs> no it, 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 here criticism is positive so okay. <laughs> So as the criticism is well taken and and yes, you're exactly right. So we'll uh we'll see what we can do. We've we've changed, um, expanded, improved. I think we've we've taken some enormous strides forward and and we have um it increased our number of projects. So the repository, this particular one where the documents is located, documents referred to simply one particular project, the transponder project. We now have many, um, and the structure of the repo really, you know, or the what what I guess what GitHub calls a project, which is overloaded word, but like we have a or organization. So we now have an organization on GitHub, and underneath that organization, it needs to be immediately, you know, discernible to people what is generally applicable to the organization, what what repositories apply to the organization, what documents and wikis will tell me about the organization overall, and then which repos are, are a particular project that's that's under the umbrella of the organization. I think we can achieve this. It's just going to take some work and some discipline. So um, it's a, I think it's probably proof that we've been very successful, that we have this problem, and we'll, we'll uh, I'm going to say let's uh, we'll address it after after DefCon and make it uh, make it happen. All right. Any other any other questions or questions or comments, suggestions, um, things on the horizon? Um, we we do have a uh, someone that has accepted 
a board position. So Frank Brickle, um, a very accomplished engineer contributor to to am both amateur radio and to to engineering in general uh, has accepted a board position. So we have five board members again, and we are looking to expand our board to seven. So invitations have been extended to two other people um, that are both accomplished people that have uh, a lot to offer the organization in terms of direction, and we're we're waiting on on that. Um, so I, I anticipate that we'll be able to add our sixth board member uh, pretty soon, depending on some some things that we need to do in adding insurance, uh, liability insurance, and and directors and officers insurance to our corporate structure. Uh, and then a, another person is a, a local person that I know through IEEE. So with a board of seven people, that's that's a pretty deep bench, uh, and it's diverse. Um, international crew of folks that, that can provide us uh, some backup and and good advice. Uh, so so on the corporate side, we're we're actually doing pretty good. On the financial side, doing pretty good. We need to probably need to look at raising a little more money for Ribbit Radio to for some some things that they would like to do um, in the near future. But they have enough money for now, and. Uh, are, are taking steps forward on several fronts. So Ribbit is another project that we should have some posters at the very least, and and maybe uh, a demo available uh, for for that. So overall, we're we're doing pretty darn good. Um, it's a you know we're we're kind of uh, odd in the sense that we're a, a nonprofit research and development firm, and and that we target. Um, the amateur radio bands um, and actively use uh, amateur radio bands in order to to do experiments and and innovative work for for open source digital radio. Um, so there's not a whole lot of organizations out there like us, which means that we don't really fit in very well to some of the boxes. Um, this is a strength, but is but is also a quirk that makes it sometimes kind of difficult to participate out there in the world. Um, but we are we're doing doing very well. So just a overall health check for this particular meeting. Uh, things are moving forward, and and it's a it's an honor and privilege to to work for the organization. All right, any any last questions or comments before we close? Probably worth mentioning that this meeting will not occur next week because we'll be traveling. Yeah, good point. So, you know, um, yeah, we we won't have it next week, uh, but I I'm really looking forward to week after next. So we we'll, we should have plenty to report. Um, I have a number of other messages from folks that weren't able to to log on today uh, because of their schedule. Um, so so everybody that. Uh, that said, hey, uh, thumbs up, and and um, things are looking good uh, from all the different projects, uh, ranging from from Neptune to Versatune, um, and also uh, Keith says says hi. He was uh, trying to trying to log on here. He'll be he'll be at DefCon, uh, but but he had he had work, um, and and everybody else that uh, that's out there, um, thumbs up back to you, and we'll. Uh, We'll see you soon. So thank you, everybody. We'll sign off today and see you a week after next.